So I finally got around to doing a few of the chores of this trailer, as I've alluded to in a previous video. Uh, first thing I did was I cut all the old pockets off for these stakes and put new pockets on and angled them. And then of course angled the stakes as well to match so that gives a little more ground clearance. That seems to be where all of the damage was done. So if I can get that last little bit of inch missing, I think it'll give a little more ground clearance. Um, I also, of course, by taking that piece out, I also removed what stops that stake from going too far down the hole. So I had to, to make and weld a little piece on there to, so that can sit on top of it. Uh, I also put a pocket in the middle. And I think this was an important upgrade because if you look, I'm trying to line this all up so that goes straight. You can see how close that would be to the tire if the, um, uh, you had something that wasn't 100% straight. If you didn't have a piece of milled lumber in there, you had a, a crook in a, or a branch and a piece of firewood, it would jam the tire and the tire would pull it back or try to shove it into the headboard. And it was uh, less than ideal, I would say. So anyway, so put a pocket in there. It doesn't seem to make any difference to the way the, the wheels move. You can move the wheels up a long ways, it won't hit it. And this stake here is removable. And I can put it on top of here and uh, leave them there if I need to, to put the box back on, which I don't even think that would inhibit the box actually, but it just gives it just a little bit of protection from the tires. So of course did that on both sides. And the front, new pockets, I lengthened the trailer out by about six inches, five or six inches, so that I can much more comfortably carry eight foot material. And before it was a little tight, it would be, oh, a big two feet sticking out the back. Now there's only about 16 or 18 inches sticking out the back. Made a big difference. Moved the headboard ahead a little bit. And also replaced these stabilizers, which were just really tin before. And now they're uh, Schedule 40 pipe. Much more substantial. So, so when my stabilizers come down, they're not going to bend. They're not going to get caught up into anything. And uh, I can move them up out of the way a lot farther than the than Woodland Mills had designed. Don't get me wrong, Woodland Mills did a great job putting this trailer together. I know it's designed in Canada, made in China, and the Chinese steel, Chinese metal, is it leads a lot to be desired. Let's put it that way. Just it's just not substantial. So whenever I can, I use made in Canada steel and just fix the weak links. Not a big, not a big issue. I'd buy the trailer again in a heartbeat for the price. And the quality of, you know, the bearings are good. This walking beam business is good. I also gusseted it in here. I put uh, little 45s uh, to all of the spindles. And I think that will prevent if I back into a tree or hook a tree or a stump or something, it's not going to bend that spindle quite as easily. Matter of fact, I've already popped a tire off the bead because it uh, got a little tight. So as I go in the woods, I try to cut a few trees out of the way. Anything that's in the way, I'll cut it out. Try to make the road better every time. So anyway, it's a great trader. You'll notice the boxes in here right now. I just left that in the woods. That's a couple hundred pounds of stuff. I just don't need to tow behind me. And uh, be, I guess the next job for this will be hauling some uh, material in to finish up a bridge over a water hole. So anyway, that's all I have to say about this. Catch you on the next video.